This is Daniel White IV with the Urban Christian News Weekend Report. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday, April 27, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First, according to Reuters, U.S. President Barack Obama said on Sunday that the United States and Europe must join forces to impose sanctions on Russia to stop it from destabilizing Ukraine where armed pro-Russian separatists were for a third day holding eight international observers prisoner. Washington and Brussels are expected, possibly as early as Monday, to name new people in firms close to Russian President Vladimir Putin, who will be hit by punitive measures, but there is no consensus yet on wider economic sanctions. Speaking during a visit to Malaysia, Obama said, Any decision on whether to slap sanctions on sectors of the Russian economy at a later time would depend on whether the United States and its allies could find a unified position on how to proceed. Second, according to CNN, John the Twenty-Third and John Paul the Second were canonized on Sunday by Pope Francis in an unprecedented ceremony witnessed by huge crowds gathered in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. Millions more around the world watched as the two former pontiffs were installed as saints. The Vatican said it expected one million people to gather in St. Peter's Square for the first dual canonization of former popes, followed by a mass. In another first, two living popes were present for the ceremony. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who resigned from the papacy a year ago citing health reasons, was invited by Pope Francis but was not at the altar. In his homily, Francis described the pair as men of courage who bore witness to God's mercy. Third, according to the New York Times, Prime Minister Chung Hong Won, the number two official in the South Korean government, apologized and offered to resign on Sunday as the country remained angry and saddened over the sinking of a ferry that left 302 people, the vast majority of them high school students, dead or missing. President Park Gun-hee quickly accepted his resignation but asked Mr. Chung to stay in his post until the government completes its rescue operations. The government has come under fire as early investigations reveal loopholes in safety measures and lax regulatory enforcement that investigators said contributed to the sinking of the ferry on April 16th. It was also criticized for failing to respond quickly and efficiently to the crisis and for fumbling during the early stages of rescue operations. Fourth, according to the Baptist Press, with the desire to keep the focus on the power of revival and prayer, Southern Baptist Convention President Fred Luter expressed excitement about this year's SBC annual meeting on June 10th and 11th in Baltimore, where messengers also will elect a new president as Luter wraps up his second term. Pointing to the annual meeting theme of restoration and revival through prayer, Luter noted the return of a Tuesday evening revival service, similar in style to last year's, that has drawn positive feedback from participants. He said, I wanted to again stay with the theme of revival, but let's undergird it with prayer. As the first ever African American to lead the SBC when he was elected in 2012, Luter will give his last message to the convention as SBC president on June 10th. Fifth, according to the Press Association, a former Archbishop of Canterbury has said that Great Britain is no longer a country of believers, but rather has entered a post-Christian era. Lord Williams of Oystermouth, who stood down as leader of the Church of England in December 2012, said the time of habitual worship was over and that a further decline of widespread faith was likely. His comments in an interview with the Sunday Telegraph came after the Prime Minister was criticized for saying the UK should be more confident about our status as a Christian country and more evangelical about faith. David Cameron's comments prompted fury from secular and atheist groups and led to the Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg, who is an atheist, calling for the separation of church and state in England. A poll for the newspaper also found that while more than half of the public regard Britain as a Christian country, the majority of practicing Christians are afraid to express their beliefs. Sixth, according to the Washington Post, Hillary Rodham Clinton spoke about her Methodist faith in personal terms on Saturday, 
telling a gathering of Methodist women that their conference felt like a homecoming and that the church's obligation to serve others has guided her personal and professional life. In her keynote address at the annual United Methodist Women Assembly, Clinton said, I have always cherished the Methodist Church because it gave us the great gift of personal salvation, but also the great obligation of social gospel. I have tried to be guided in my own life ever since as an advocate for children and families, for women and men around the world who are oppressed and persecuted and denied their human rights and human dignity. Clinton told the 7,000 women who gave her a rousing welcome at the Kentucky International Convention Center that Methodist women know how to, quote, get things done, including taking on the responsibility of serving their communities and the less fortunate. Seventh, according to USA Today, President Obama on Sunday defended the Malaysian government's handling of its fruitless search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, saying officials are working hard to find the aircraft that is believed to be deep at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Obama made the comments at a news conference in Malaysia on Sunday following talks with Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak on bilateral trade and human rights. The U.S. is helping in the search for the commercial jet which disappeared last month while flying from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 people on board. Obama said he understands the heartache and suffering the loved ones of the passengers are feeling, but he said it will take even more time to find the plane because of the huge amount of ocean that is being scoured in the search operation. Eighth, according to the Associated Press, the United States and the Philippines have reached a 10-year pact that would allow a larger U.S. military presence in this Southeast Asian nation as it grapples with increasingly tense territorial disputes with China. The Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, which would give American forces temporary access to selected military camps and allow them to preposition fighter jets and ships, is due to be signed Monday at the Department of Defense in the Philippine capital of Manila, shortly before the arrival of President Barack Obama. Obama's visit is the last leg of a four-country Asian tour that also took him to Japan, South Korea, and Malaysia. Ninth, according to the Daily Mail, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, is facing mounting pressure to crack down on clergy who marry their gay partners, as the threat of a split in the Anglican Church continues to grow. A powerful group of conservative African archbishops said they were deeply troubled by liberal Western attitudes towards homosexuality and that Church of England clerics were flouting a ban on same-sex weddings. The archbishop said it was very concerning that the ban was being openly disregarded and added, We look to the Church of England to give clear leadership as moral confusion about the status of marriage in England deepens. Their intervention follows the civil wedding this month of a priest and his same-sex partner under new rules pushed through by David Cameron. Church of England conservatives believe the bishop will drag his feet on possible disciplinary actions because of fears of a liberal backlash. Tenth, according to AFP, Iraq's most senior church leader says the dwindling Christian community in the country faces a disaster and if no action is taken, they will number just a few thousand in a decade. Chaldean patriarch Louis Sacco said the daily migration of Christians from Iraq was terrifying and blamed a range of factors, including generally poor security in the country and worsening religious extremism. Iraq's Christian community is a shadow of what it used to be, once numbering more than a million nationwide, with upwards of 600,000 in Baghdad alone. There are now fewer than 400,000 across the country. After visiting Christian communities across the nation, Sako told the AFP, the daily migration of Christians from Iraq is terrifying and very worrying. The church is facing a disaster, and if the situation continues along this course, our numbers in the coming 10 years will be not more than a few thousand. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. As always, we want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today, and He will. 
Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. May God bless your day.